canned meat is weird. Ever wonder how it goes from moo to a can on your shelf? Today, we're exploring the bizarre journey of meat, from fresh cuts to factory processing to your pantry. The goal of canning is to get rid of harmful microbes, including spores and cells and enzymes that can spoil food. The process uses specific time and temperature settings based on heat resistance of the microorganisms in question. To make sure a pathogen or spoilage microbe is inactive, the canning process considers how heat penetrates the food and how long the food needs to stay fresh. For cooked meat, this involves destroying harmful pathogens and spoilage microorganisms. While vegetable cells are killed at slightly higher temperatures than they thrive in, some bacteria spores are tough to kill with heat. So, for products that need a long shelf life, canning involves heating enough to kill botulinum spores. Even though canned foods aren't completely sterile, they're considered safe if they're free from live spores of Bacillus sterothermophilus or Clostridium perfringens. The main target for destruction is Clostridium botulinum because of its danger and the heat resistance of its spores. Other targets include Bacillus species like Sterothermophilus, Bacillus thermoacidrans, and others. For poultry products, targets include perfrigin spores or vegetable cells of Salmonella, Staphylococcus, and Campylobacter. If canned foods are stored in hot climates, spore-forming thermophiles are also a concern. Proper heat treatment ensures long shelf life even in tropical regions. Since most canned meats go through intense heat treatment, they don't need refrigeration afterward. Spoilage usually happens due to processing errors or recontamination because of canned failures. It's also important to note that the texture of the product might change during heating. For example, canned emulsions like luncheon meats or pâtés change from semi-fluid to solid, altering heat transfer from convection to conduction. If cans get recontaminated, microbes can enter through sealing defects or punctures, causing the cans to swell or sour. Often, the contaminants are spore-forming bacteria. Improper exhausting during processing can lead to Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus mycoids being present in the can. Sterilization Processing of Canned Meat Canned meat products offer a long-lasting option for meat storage under various conditions through sterilization. This process involves heating the meat in a sealed can to 250 degrees Fahrenheit at 12 to 15 pounds per square inch of pressure. This method, called retort cooking, kills all anaerobic vegetable and spore-forming bacteria, including the dangerous Clostridium botulinum. One downside is that retort cooking can change the flavor a bit, but overall these products taste good. Canned hams, for example, remain popular because they taste great and can be stored on a shelf for a long time. Many soups and vegetables also undergo retort cooking. Besides canned hams, there are many other canned meat products like Spam, stews, Vienna-style wieners, chili, and soups. These are all processed using retort cooking and can be found in retail stores ready for consumers to purchase and enjoy. Pasteurized Canned Products Pasteurization involves heating canned products to 155 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This process doesn't kill all microorganisms, so these products don't have an indefinite shelf life and must be refrigerated to stay fresh. Pasteurized canned hams are a common example of this type of product found in many retail stores. For the best taste, it's recommended to consume them within six months of processing. Most canned meats are commercially sterilized, meaning they are processed to kill microorganisms and their spores. This allows the meat to be stored indefinitely at any temperature as long as the can remains sealed. However, the meat will differ from fresh meat and may change chemically and physically over time. In fact, some canned meat has remained edible for up to 114 years. In the early days of canning, meat was heated in an open water bath, which didn't allow the temperature to exceed 100 degrees Celsius. This required a long processing time to achieve commercial sterility. Adding salts like calcium chloride to the water raised the boiling point reducing the processing time. By 1874, a controllable pressure steam retort had been invented. 
Between 1920 and 1930, research on bacterial spore heat resistant and heat penetration into cans allowed the development of precise time temperature processing schedules, replacing trial and error. Since Clostridium botulinum, which is the most lethal food poisoning organism, can't grow below a pH of 4.5, all foods like meat that can support its growth get enough heat treatment to destroy it. Curing ingredients in products like canned hams reduces the risk of harboring Clostridium botulinum, allowing for pasteurization. Clostridium sporogens, another spore-forming organism that can grow on meat, is more heat-resistant than Clostridium botulinum and is used to evaluate heat processing. Some thermophilic bacteria can withstand very high heat but eliminating them completely would harm the meat's quality and lower its nutritional value. These organisms are controlled as much as possible by preventing initial contamination. The heat resistance of bacteria in meat products can vary depending on the type of meat. For instance, Streptococcus faecalis is more resistant to heat in comminuted salt pork than in beef, likely due to the difference in water activity. Research shows that the thermal stability of bacterial enzymes depends more on their intercellular environment more than their molecular structure. The texture of sterilized canned meat becomes more like cooked meat than fresh. Excessive heat treatment can severely affect the meat's appearance and taste. Additionally, meat contains vitamins like thiamine and ascorbic acid, which are destroyed by heat, making canned meat less nutritious than fresh meat. However, meat isn't primarily consumed for its vitamins, and these vitamins are mostly destroyed during cooking anyway. Storing cans at high temperatures for long periods can further degrade these nutrients. The color of canned meats also changes due to high temperatures, turning the red pigment, or myoglobin, into brown myohemotromogen. If cans aren't lacquered inside, discoloration can occur from H2S reacting with the metal. Flavor changes during canning aren't usually a problem since canning is similar to cooking and meat is typically cooked before eating. However, the biological value of meat proteins may decrease if processed at 113 degrees Celsius for longer than about 5 minutes. A significant advancement in achieving commercial sterility with minimal product damage is the development of heat sterilizable flexible bags or retort pouches. Made from multiple laminates, these bags can be hermetically sealed. Retort pouches offer several benefits, shorter thermal process times than metal or glass containers, shelf life comparable to frozen products without needing a frozen storage chain, less container products interaction, and the convenience of boil-in-the-bag preparation. Meat Canning Operations Canned meat products range from whole mussels, stews, and luncheon meats, to sausages, sauces with meat pieces, and paste products. The meat canning process involves three main operations, can filling, exhaustion, and heat treatment. Can filling The ratio of solids to liquids and the distribution of solids within the can affect heat penetration. Loosely packed solids heat faster than closely packed ones. Generally, 30% of the can's volume must be liquid, like a brine or a sauce, for good heat transfer. When filling pastes, it's important to avoid air bubbles as they hinder heat transfer and may cause sterilization problems. The headspace, around 0.5% of the total can volume, is also factored into thermal calculations. Exhaustion this process involves removing air from the headspace and the bulk of the food to ensure good heat penetration and achieve the desired sterilization temperature. It also reduces the risk of aerobic bacteria growth, especially in pasteurized products like some luncheon meats. Exhaustion can be done by vapor injection or by heating the cans in an exhaustion chamber or tunnel at 85 to 95 degrees Celsius, removing over 90% of the air in the headspace. The cans are then immediately sealed and, when cooled, a partial vacuum is created by the condensation of water vapor. Heat Treatment for pasteurization, raw meat is packaged and then cooked in an oven, a temperature humidity controlled chamber, or a hot water bath until the center reaches about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Suitable packaging bags for this process are made of multi-layer laminate structures formed by tubular extrusion. 
commonly used materials like nylon, polyethylene, polypropylene, and polyester. Pasteurized meats must be nitrate cured in the United States to comply with federal regulations and labeled perishable keep under refrigeration. Post-processing. Modern pasteurization rarely applies to unaltered raw meat for preservation. Instead, meat is often mixed with functional ingredients to improve palatability or inhibit microbial growth. These ingredients include sodium chloride, polyphosphate, and sodium lactate. Nitrate in cured meat provides strong antimicrobial and antioxidant activities and helps fix meat color. Pasteurized cured meats are resistant to microbial spoilage, partly due to the inhibitory substance formed during pasteurization when nitrate reacts with other components. Fully canned foods are expected to last at least two years, retaining safety and nutritional value. Canned foods can remain microbiologically safe for much longer, though quality may change over time. The canning process has a proven safety record and remains a reliable technology for food preservation. So, did you know so much science went behind that can of corned beef that's been sitting in your cabinet since 2015? Leave a comment below. But that's all for now. See ya!